Hi, my name is James Clem. We're going to talk about two parameters together. And this is where, it, it, this is really, really, really important. I get a lot of calls from CEREC users saying that the restorations are high. If you used the default parameters from the factory, more than likely they're going to be way too high. There's two parameters that significantly impact the occlusion. Now that's assuming that our restorations are seating all the way. So that's in the spacer section. Occlusal offset and occlusal contact strength. If we're using correlation, which is what we used to call it in 385, it's now called biocopy. The primary factor that affects that occlusion is occlusal offset. When I scroll through the scale on occlusal offset, you'll see the whole occlusal surface either go up or go down. You will not see that effect on your design screen. It only is a result in the milling outcome. Now for years I've used negative 150. That's going clear back to 2.8 and that's been very consistent. The way I used to set that parameter up was for, at the time, correlation and today we call it biocopy. It is true, you can take opposing arch and a buckle scan even when you're doing biocopy today and get the benefits of the opposing arch if you want to refine the occlusion. That's the second factor that affects the occlusion. Now in biogeneric, I'm going to use occlusal offset, which is still negative 150, with negative 50 on occlusal contact strength. That means my occlusal contacts are a light blue. That's really consistent. Now one shift for Omnicam. For Omnicam users, at least at this time, I use negative 200 for occlusal offset and negative 50 for occlusal contact strength. Now we're not done with occlusion here because we need to talk about a few other principles. When I'm fabricating my occlusal table and placing my contacts, I want them to be on non-inclined slopes because that can create shear force and that can create lateral or balancing and working interferences. The other thing is remember this one number. I want it one square millimeter. That's the size I want my contact to be. If that's the case, and if you know you have anterior rise or anterior glide or anterior guidance, I call it anterior glidance, you're assured that you're probably not going to really get a lateral interference adjustment that you need to adjust afterwards as long as you make those contacts one square millimeter and on non-inclined planes. So that's three areas, working cusp, marginal ridges, and on molars, landing pads. That would be somewhere in a fossa somewhere. Just keep that in mind. So we have two parameters that affect occlusion. With biocopy, it's going to be your occlusal offset that has the main dominance over your occlusion. If you're adding an opposing arch, which we do in biogeneric individual, it's the occlusal offset and the occlusal contact strength. Those two parameters work together like a marriage. You can't have one without the other, particularly if you're wanting to refine your occlusion. And here's a question I would ask you. As assuming that it's not a second molar, would you rather have a restoration high or out of contact? Assuming those were your only two options. Think about that for a moment. Because remember, a high restoration that we're adjusting in is going to compress the periodontal ligament. I find that my occlusion is pretty close to shim stock. That's eight microns. And that's using negative 150 for occlusal offset, negative 50 for occlusal contact strength, and that's in the blue cam. The Omni cam, I just shift occlusal offset up to negative 200. The trofoil articulating paper is also eight microns thick, and it marks Emacs very well. I tell you, if our occlusion were dialed in, where it was perfect all the time, we'd have an easier practice. And uh, no matter who you were working on, if we can get our occlusion close, we're going to have more joy in our day where you're not adjusting away that beautiful morphology and all that anatomy that you've so carefully placed in your restoration and you're so proud of it and you seed it and find that it's high and all of a sudden it's a flat crown by the time you're done and, or a restoration inlay, onlay, and you just don't get that rush. So if our occlusion can be on, our stress level goes way down, we have more confidence, the patient goes, oh wow, that feels great. 
haven't had too many crowns done that way before. That's what we want. It's good for them, it's good for us. Thanks for watching.